this afternoon we talked about the homily of our lives. And I want to begin by looking at Mary's response to the angel and God's word as the development of the homily of her life. She follows very much the pattern we talked about this afternoon. As the angel approached her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. She, she wasn't quite sure. She was a bit afraid, but she had a heartfelt attentiveness to that word. She stayed with the word. She didn't run away. She, she had a heartfelt attention to it. We too, as we study God's Word, as we listen to God's Word, we are called to have this heartfelt attention to the Word of God. And out of that attention, then, she began to ponder. She began to listen in silence and reflect. We talked about that's what we do when we love. We give the time necessary to listen. We don't know how long it was. Long enough where the, the angel ended up saying even more. It was while she was in that time of pondering, while she was in that time of listening, still attentive to that first word of the angel, that the angel spoke more words to her. As God does to us as we listen attentively to his word, more things will be drawn out. As we write the homily of our own lives, this was... Mary was, was writing the homily. God was writing it with her. And she was attentive to the word. She pondered the word. And there was more said. The angel said, Be not afraid. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, the prophecy fulfilled from our Old Testament passage, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary continues to have this heartfelt attention. She continues to ponder these words. But now she, she moves into trying to get a more familiarity with the Word. Remember, that's part of what it is for us to, to write this homily of our lives, to be more familiar with the Word. And one way to get more familiar with the Word is to start asking questions. Start digging in. We might read a commentary. We might ask someone. We might be in a small group and, and talk about it. Mary had the angel right before, and she began to... To want to know more. How can this be? I have no relationship with a man. She's trying to get more familiar, trying to understand how can it be? And as she tries to get more familiar with the Word, letting this Word of God sink into her, she's even given more words. <laughs> more is revealed to her. And we begin to see how the Word of God is shaping the homily of her life. And she finds out that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's how it's going to happen. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. She found out things as she began to dig into the Word and ask questions she, she couldn't imagine she would hear. Not only how she would conceive, but even that nothing is impossible for God. Even her elderly cousin Elizabeth. has conceived. Nothing is impossible for God. Samaria is still wrestling, right? 
What does she do with this information? How does she let God's Word truly form her? And by grace, she says yes. And what does she do? Does what, what does she do? She lets God's Word penetrate her first. And it was a deep, profound penetration. It was an all-consuming penetration. She let God come into her womb that you and me might have life. She didn't know what it would all entail, but she let God's Word, she trusted in God's Word, and she let it penetrate her first. That's why she's the model disciple. It's like we can model our life after her as we try to write the homily of our own lives. She let the Word of God through this angel penetrate her, and her life would never be the same. And it would never be again about her. It was always, from that moment on, about Jesus. And because she let the Word of God penetrate her, she could offer Jesus to the world. One of the things I love about being Catholic is that I can talk freely about Mary. As a Protestant, I, I was so limited. You could hardly say anything about Mary without, about Mary without uh, having someone accuse you of being too Catholic or not Orthodox or something. Mary has so much to teach us about discipleship, about sacrifice, about letting God's Word penetrate us. The Catholics have this beautiful uh, theology of Mary and understanding of her role uh, even throughout the, uh, with the context of the Old Testament. Mary is considered the new Eve, where the first Eve, through her disobedience, sin came into the world. But Mary's the new Eve, through her obedience, through her letting God's word penetrate her, saying, yes, let it be, she reversed that. So her obedience now, brings life, brings forgiveness, brings hope, brings promise, brings the air of the gospel and the spirit to the world. In the Old Testament, God's presence was seen in the, the Ten Commandments, the Ark of the Covenant. The covenant was placed there as a presence of God. It was holy. Catholics understand that Mary is the, the ark, the new covenant ark, where she allows the holiness of her son Jesus, very God, become safe in her womb. She becomes that ark to hold God. And she gives of her flesh so that God could have flesh, so he could be totally human and totally divine. But I read something this, this last week from a Father Michael Marsh, which I hadn't heard before. And that is not only is Mary these things that we talked about. She is the new Eve. She is the Ark of the Covenant, the new covenant. But he talked about that Mary's words emulate even creation. She is the mother of the new creation. Where in the first creation... You have the Trinity there. The Spirit is hovering over the depths. And God is there and he, he speaks creation into being. And Jesus is that very Word of God, we're told in John. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So in the beginning of creation, God said, let there be. Let there be light and there was light. God spoke creation into being. In, in the New Covenant... The Holy Spirit, the Trinity, is there with, with Mary. We're told that the, the angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come over you, the Most High will overshadow you, and the child within you will be called holy. We've got the Trinity right there. We've got the Spirit. We've got the Father. We've got Christ being born within her, being conceived in her womb. Where in the first creation it was, let there be, and creation came into being. 
through Mary, the new creation, the mother of the new creation, her words are, let it be. Let it be done to me. And through her faith, new creation happens. Through her faith, through her yes to God, Jesus is born. And he lives, and he understands our suffering. And he's not treated well at times. Ultimately, he's abandoned even by his closest friends. He's scourged, he's crucified, and yet he rises again that we might have life. That nothing is impossible with God. Let it be. It's not a passive word. It's not giving up. Let it be. It is dynamic and active as we could possibly imagine. Her let it be was complete sacrifice, was plead and utter trust in God, offering her life as a sacrifice to allow Christ to be born. And we learn so much from Mary. We're told that Mary is, is favored by God. Do not be afraid, for you are favored by God. You know, I, I wonder sometimes, what derails us? How come Mary wasn't derailed through this? She kept her focus on God's Word. She let the Spirit consume her. She let the Spirit and the Word of God penetrate her. But these two things that the, the angel says to her as she's pondering, first, do not be afraid, and then you have found favor. Both of those struggles in our lives um, can derail us. We all have some fear. And fear hinders us from really allowing God to penetrate us, to letting his word penetrate us first. There's hundreds and hundreds of fears. I tapped out a list of a hundred fears. This is just the top 27. But there's fears of rejection. These are all fears that hinder us from really saying yes, really allowing our lives to be a true witness, really allowing Christ to be born fully within us for the life of the world. There's the fear of commitment. There's the fear of the unknown. There's fear of intimacy. There's fear of failure. There's fear that we're unworthy. And I'm sure if you think about it, you have your own fears. But the angel says to us, and in fact, almost every time an angel appears in Scripture, the angel's first words are, do not be afraid. And I don't think it's because the angel looks, you know, really off, you know. It's, it's because God knows that fear is what hinders us sometimes from really listening attentively to the Word of God. And not only does the angel say, do not be afraid, but the angel says, for you have found favor with God. And that's the other thing I think that hinders us. It derails us sometimes because we just don't think we're worthy. We don't think we have favor with God. Sometimes we look at our circumstances and we, says, we say, how could God favor me? But Mary teaches us that God's favoring of us, God's love for us, is deeper than our circumstances. We have to look deep. Certainly Mary didn't feel very favored when she was ridiculed and she was verbally abused by others in Nazareth who spoke all kinds of evil against her because she was a teenage girl who was pregnant and not married. She probably didn't feel too favored when she was nine months pregnant riding on a donkey to Bethlehem. 
She probably didn't feel too favored when after the birth she had to flee to Egypt just to protect her son. All in all, she knew that hundreds if not thousands of children her own son's age were being slaughtered. She probably didn't feel too favored when she watched her son not understood. When she wa watched the religious leaders of the time hate him despise him, try to trick him, and eventually handed him over to have him crucified. Watching her son be scourged and then crucified and watching her son die on the cross, she probably didn't feel too faithful. And so we have to look beyond our circumstances. And we have to trust that being favored is a reality that God sets. It's the truth of God's word because it, it comes from God's heart, not from our life circumstances. Yes, sometimes we are going to feel favor. Our life circumstances is going to reveal that somewhere, but we can't base it on our circumstance. We have to base it on God's word. We have to trust God. Trust Him to, to let go of our fears. Trust Him that we truly are favored. You are favored, each one of you. And God has a new creation in store for each one of us. Forgiveness and life. We may not see it fully sometimes on this side of heaven. Remember, we waited between these two embraces, the embrace of God's mercy in our baptism, where he claims us as his own, and we wait for his, this joyful second coming of Christ where he's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. And all things will be made new. And we as his disciples, like Mary, have the opportunity to share the new life and the new creation of Christ with a world that is dying for true love that is longing for true witnesses. It's hungering for true food. That needs authentic, incredible witnesses for the gospel. That we can say with Mary, let it be. And again, not a passive let it be but let it be that comes from attentive listening to the Word of God, being attentive to the Word of God. Let it be that comes from silence before God, listening for His Word to us. But let it be that comes from asking questions of the Word, struggling, looking at commentaries, wrestling with what, God's, what is God's will for me? What is the thing I could, God's calling me to do right now? You remember trying to align our will with God's will is the pressing business of our lives. And we do that to the best of our ability. Sometimes we're not going to know exactly what God wants us to do, but we're going to do our best to discern it and then move forward. As long as it's not offending God or breaking any of the commandments, we're, we're good. God's will is pliable. And as we seek ultimately to let God's word penetrate us first, to fall in love with Jesus. So we can be a light to a world lost in darkness. Most of you know that my mother-in-law died just a, a week and a half ago. And uh, so her, her service is coming up. Uh, rosary vigil on Monday night and then the memorial service on Tuesday afternoon. Well, she was uh, a faithful, faithful Catholic, and um, and she, uh, as I mentioned, raised ten children, was a daily mass attender, loved God, um, and she had written out almost everything she wanted for her service. I mean, she had uh, she had the prayers, she had the songs, she had. Uh, um, you know, some other the, the, uh, kind of a poem. She, uh, she had everything. And one of the songs, well, most of the songs were, were not too surprising. 
uh, they were they're beautiful songs, and you'd know most of them, probably all of them. But there was one song that was surprising to all of us. But the more the last month that I've been preparing for this, and especially this talk, the more this song speaks to me in a whole different way than it's ever spoken to me before. She's, she was 89. She lived this faithful life, and this is a song she wants sung. So I'm going to sing this song um, at, during the vigil uh, rosary. And if you, you know it, feel free to sing along with me. This was the surprise to the family. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. 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 Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, and there is still a light that shines on me, Shine until tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be, 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 whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Pope Francis calls Mary the star of the new evangelization. She's the model of discipleship, the missionary disciple, the one who wrote this beautiful homily of her life for us with, with the Holy Spirit. He writes this, Mary was able to turn a stable into a home for Jesus. With poor swaddling clothes and an abundance of love, she is the handmaid of the Father who sings his praises. She is the friend who is ever concerned that wine not be lacking in our lives. She is the woman whose heart was pierced by a sword and who understands all our pain. As mother of all, she is a sign of hope for people suffering the birth pains of justice. She is the missionary who draws near to us 
and that accompanies us throughout life, opening our hearts to faith by her maternal love. As a true mother, she walks at our side, she shares our struggles, and she constantly surrounds us with God's love. Mary let herself be guided by the Holy Spirit on a journey of faith towards a destiny of service and fruitfulness. Today we look to her and ask her to help us proclaim the message of salvation to all and to enable new disciples to become evangelizers in turn. And if you have your books, I invite you to turn to 288. We're going we're gonna to close by um, sharing a, a prayer together. It's right at the very end. I'll read some of about halfway uh, from 288, and then we will we'll join together in the prayer. Mary is able to recognize the traces of God's Spirit in events great and small. She constantly contemplates the mystery of God in our world, in human history, and in our daily lives. She is the woman of prayer and work in Nazareth, and she is also Our Lady of Help who sets out from her town with haste to be of service to others. This interplay of justice and tenderness, of contemplation and concern for others, is what makes the ecclesial community look to Mary as a model of evangelization. We implore her maternal intercession that the church may become a home for many peoples, a mother for all peoples, and that the way may be opened to the birth of a new world. It is the risen Christ who tells us, with a power that fills us with confidence and unshakable hope, Behold, I make all things new. With Mary, we advance confidently towards the fulfillment of this promise, and to her we pray together. Mary, Virgin and Mother, you who moved by the Holy Spirit, Welcome the word of life in the depths of your humble faith. As you gave yourself completely to the Eternal One, help us to say our own yes to the urgent call, as pressing as ever, to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Filled with Christ's presence, you brought joy to John the Baptist, making him exult in the womb of his mother. Brimming over with joy, you sang of the great things done by God. Standing at the foot of the cross, with unyielding faith, you received the joyful comfort of the resurrection, and joined the disciples in awaiting the Spirit, so that the evangelizing church might be born. Obtain for us now a new ardor born of the resurrection, that we may bring to all the gospel of life, which triumphs over death. Give us a holy courage to seek new paths, that the gift of unfading beauty may reach every man and woman. Virgin of listening and contemplation, mother of love, bride of the eternal wedding feast, pray for the church, whose pure icon you are, that she may never be closed in on herself or lose her passion for establishing God's kingdom. Star of the new evangelization, help us to bear radiant witness to communion, service, ardent and generous faith, justice and love of the poor, that the joy of the gospel may reach to the ends of the earth, illuminating even the fringes of our world, Mother of the living gospel, wellspring of happiness for God's little ones, pray for us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.